concentrate on your basic it doesn't look like you know who who bowls at you is it's immaterial of it if you stick to your basic everything can be handled so from that perspective if there is earlier it was like you know an external threat or perimeter uh, network was an issue but now it has come to an end users issue where like you know byod bring your own device so you have your laptops you have your usb drives and people get connected from anywhere so that is the biggest threat to an organization so such malwares come to us maybe via email maybe via pen drive maybe via some sharing of files that happens so one has to look at it this is from the <clears throat> organization perspective now coming on to the apps that are developed which was mentioned while one has to follow a code review practice so uh, let, let me help you understand that uh, from an assessment perspective the way we we uh, develop apps so we have our best practices incorporated why we follow the sdlc software development life cycle so in that the source code which is developed we get it scanned we get it addressed in the first stage itself so the vulnerabilities that are there are addressed in the first stage itself to a larger extent then comes the application security where we have to the chunk the major chunk is removed only the few things which are there which needs to be addressed that has been taken care of now this application which is developed that gets stored or it's on the servers which needs to be again assessed a soft code like you know you have to do a vulnerability or the patch management as sir rightly mentioned like you know patch management has to be done so that needs that that gets addressed above all these things as a regular practice we follow like you know that this is on a quarterly basis that is done plus this apps that are developed are being tested by third party vendors so even if you have internal vendors who do do that for you but they don't get an external exposure in the sense they have a limited exposure because the environment is that way and the organization also don't give you that perspective like where you start testing and you do all the things like you know do ethical hacking and all and which will impact the internal environment also so from that perspective this has been done and you get an authority also authorization also that the person the organization which is doing it's genuine and they understand it but this genuine organization third party which i am referring to is there is a certain body which is there in india which empanels this vendor and they have to undergo a rigorous test and then only they empaneled to conduct such tests so government agencies you talk about of a major organizations when you speak about such organizations are been empaneled and then they assess it so we conducted from two different vendors so we understand like you know two different perspective once that is done we have a, a governing body like you know a best practices say maybe any of the big fours or maybe consulting firms which for, which understands and we they come and authorize and tells us like you know the what are the processes that we have followed is as per the expectations or not once this is done this is getting shared with rbi certain and different government bodies also to understand where we stand on that front so on a whole while we speak about and there are pressures related to releasing related to different products also it's on the ceos also how firm he is and how does he put across that risk so earlier like you know say 5 to 10 years back it was like you know i could stand by and say boss i am not enabling a usb drive for you do whatever you want to i'm not if i do whatever you want to but today if i don't enable it if i'm not along with the business i'm out of my job i have to be because i have to support the business i have to give them what is required today it's no more like you know that earlier business kind of a thing today it's virtual all everything digital i have to go beyond my the expertise i have to think beyond whatever like you know that before the technology is coming down how do i control it how do i address it so that is something which is uh, which i need to look at and i have to support it at the same time i wouldn't get afraid of like you know any incidents or any attacks that are coming for me because it is so vulnerable today that any anyone can get attacked at can get attacked so it's purely like you know how well i am prepared to understand 
and identify what kind of an attack is coming to me. If I have to, I have to build up that robot system in my environment. If I don't build it, I am nowhere into the market. I can't stay. So unless and until I understand it, I prepare a response team also for it. So if there is an attack, I need to have response to it. I, I ensure that, okay, I respond in, in a manner per perspective. So it can be a malware, it can be a DDoS attack. Anyone can come to it. So purely like, you know, I'm not uh, stagnant. It, it was like, you know, wanna cry also that had come down. So <clears throat> the security fraternity also has come very close together. The banking environment, the financial impact from the organization, uh, from the country perspective, they have come very close together. Where they have, like, you know, sharing of information is there, where uh, people talk about the best practices that needs to follow. In case of, uh, say, the wanna cry, as I said, like, you know, identification is one and re response is one. So, in wanna cry case, the IOCs, indication of your compromise. So it is purely like, you know, this data which is there, which helps you to identify in your security management system, which will help you to understand what events are coming also. I I'm giving you this real time of scenarios, how one looks at. So purely like, you know, once you identify it and according to you respond and then the attacks get surprised. So how, you so one more thing is like, you know, even if you talk about malware, so a known signature is always there for you. But what about an unknown signature? What about a zero day attack? How are you going to address it? So WannaCry has been one of those. While the patch was one, was systems were to be patched, but yeah, people didn't patch. But however, in, in India was not impacted that much because we follow it. But while the, across the globe, there were a lot of impact to it. And in fact, the, the, what I would say that the design is from out, uh, the, you know, overseas people, they do that design, but implementation India has been following very rigorously on and we ensure that the best practices are followed. At the same time, what Sir has mentioned related to hardware also. So there is a firm set body that is also been established by the government where uh, this kind of question mark or this kind of concern is already been raised and there are people, there are government bodies who are looking into it and just trying to act on it so that this such things can be addressed. From the banking sector which is uh, a very uh, like you know sensitive for the entire country where we have IDRBT also having a quarterly based meeting with the security professional from the banking environment. In fact, there is a drill, cyber drill exercise also with the latest security attacks that comes. So we face it on a quarterly basis. So that's how we also learn different kind of attacks. In fact, we hire people and like, you know, give them some consultancy fees so that they come and do an assessment for our environment also on that perspective. That, that's how you build your robot system. So there is no more for me from an NPA perspective. Like I don't look at like, you know, okay boss, this is an attack. It's all there. We have to accept it. Anyone can get attacked. Anyone is vulnerable. Even for that matter, even if you patch your system right now, the very next second you don't know there is a zero-day vulnerability that has come. And that can, of course, it's not so easy to develop a zero-day vulnerability, but you never know on that front. That's my say on that front. But to address such a thing, <coughs> mind you, with so many transactions, so many uh, attacks, so, so many uh, different modes of threat vectors, and different modes of people also communicate from internally to the outside world. It's difficult for a human mind, human thought also, to really identify and address such concerns and attacks. So there is something called as artificial intelligence or machine language, <coughs> which plays a very important role nowadays. And we are looking at from that technology perspective where we have such kind of attacks, such kind of inputs are being incorporated into it, and then we identify such attacks and it becomes easy also. Otherwise, from a, purely from a human body, human being, it's not, it's not possible. But at the same time, I'm really glad and happy that, okay, it's, it's doing such a thing where the, uh, the kids are getting exposed to such an environment and such kind of talks. It's really appreciable. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, you have answered all the domains and all. Thank you so much for that. And especially, especially... Was that an attack? 
<laughs> all the domain <laughs> okay especially we could understand the security should not be an one time implementation or special event it should be an ongoing process we could definitely understand about that and uh, here uh, my next question is how now uh, you can see that microsoft and google everyone has started to investing more on the artificial intelligence and big data and uh, uh, big data related initiatives they have created the open source platform as well for the developers to develop their own things come up with the innovative ideas since we are depending on the artificial intelligence and big data related initiative on the security perspective how how uh, serious the attackers also adopting the same technology and firing back to us and is there any consideration was already taken and what kind of effective uh, prevention idea we should plan accordingly yes to answer this i want to share one uh, real life incident in 17th century in order to pro, uh, preserve the food in europe what they used to do use ice uh, and then everyone started using ice slowly that lake ice was uh, finished so what they did let they started setting up the ice factories but going to the ice factory getting back that business model didn't work much but then later what happened is um, refrigerator now we have to find even in the uh, villages we have everyone has a refrigerator so if you see in product is not changed it was in 17th century 18th century and now also so in product is not changed only the skills and the methodology got changed okay now just i want to link this to the hacking activity so if you see that if we don't change it by default you will get hacked you don't have to do anything in the morning some sir said that see you don't have to tell them that okay come um, uh, access my site you as um, your computer or data you are already giving the data by pressing um, i agree and all this so there are four component as a organization we usually do one is first is your change management has to be very strong you should uh, as correctly said by uh, my colleague here that oh, it or ciso cannot be a bottleneck we are business in obler but we should also have the guts to say no or please provide me the business justification and support them that is one thing second thing is your incident management has to be very good because if in order to understand what is going on in the um, your organization you saw that suddenly on saturday night 1 o'clock that someone is sending a lot of email why so at least that analytics that's what analytical softwares are doing so their behavior patterns they are understanding third thing is that user awareness you do all the implementation but your user is not aware and he is installing unnecessary softwares he is uh, sharing the data with all the people who he should not be uh, that is something which is we need to put lot of effort on and last but not least is least privileges we have to manage it so we in order to provide why you need admin rights how many of you are logging to your personal computer with admin rights is it required if you are have to browse why you need admin rights right those are the basic hygiene if you take care 70% will take uh, issues will be taken care remaining 30% god is there don't worry <laughs> <laughs> that's great ask it sir so you I want to add some points uh, yes. so as you said about this so it's a cat and a mouse race i've been seeing it for now 17 years of my experience in this domain that uh, it's always been a cat and a mouse race so if you rightly said that today we were worried about websites then we came to the apps and now we are looking at data mining and artificial intelligence so as uh, the hackers community will evolve in the ai domain same way will the defense capabilities also will evolve so it is not that we will leave them like that only okay so there are three things which i always stress upon and that is one is attack so that is obviously we need an attack second is defense the third most important thing for an organization or a product is response and how good we are at response and how good we are at intrusion detection i i was just talking to one of my delegates here who is a telecom expert and he is here uh, as one of the delegates uh, i was recently witnessing a crime which uh, was reported to my cyber crime cell in noida where a business organization has a toll free number pstn line and all of a sudden it was uh, his office closes on saturday or oh, sorry friday 
Saturday, Sunday, his PSTN line was excessively used and he got a billing of 40 lakh rupees. And the people to tell him were the mobile company people that, hey, listen, it thinks that your line has been hacked. And the most shocking thing was that his credit limit was 40,000 rupees. <laughs> credit limit was 40,000. 40, the concern was that when we saw the detail of that PSTN line being used, all outgoing calls were made to some country in Africa and Afghanistan. And 48 lakh billing for two days. I have more than seven, eight complaints lying across the country where the cyber cells have been reported with this complaint and the digital EPBX system, which works on with an IVR. Welcome to Rakshit Tandon. If you know the extension number, dial the number. This is where they have a vulnerability. And that day after that, when I was investigating this operation, I found on Google, and uh, one of my hacker colleagues sitting here would ju justify this, that there are forums which teaches you how can you hack into a PSTN line, use it, misuse it, and make international calls and put the bill on their head. So now this two question comes here. What was the credit limit doing? And how strong was the intrusion detection system to create a response to the attack? So if the organization, the hackers community, the security agencies, and the product agencies, they focus on these three things, so we will always be able to fight out the hackers. That is my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, based on the uh, Rakshit, Rakshit, sir, as per your input, we could take the input like uh, the hacking is always for innovation. As much as the artificial intelligence in, uh, introducing the hacking, as much as the security also evolving the same. So we can take that as a secret input. And next thing is uh, to the Snehal, sir. So we could understand uh, based on the artificial intelligence, we need to adapt more layer-based security stuff so that we can avoid so, uh, so much attacks and all. So now we are concluding this session with two audience open question. And anyone interested? Yes, please. Hand over the mic to them. Hello. Uh, my question is that, uh, uh, for a business, com uh, company is doing business, and uh, CEO or uh, higher authority are responsible for that person. A term which is more uh, revolving is BYOD, bring your own device. If the CEO or higher authority uh, that works in his office in a secure network where firewall ideas, everything is there, so they are protected. And same system, uh, because if they are doing their work in their device, so they are uh, also storing the data that also be related to the company and that device they are bringing at their home. Now, how much uh, their data is secure now? Is it uh, valuable to bring their device at home? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, on the mobile security front, you're very right. I mean, it's, it's an emerging threat because now with everybody using a smartphone for personal use as well as business use, there's always a possibility that whatever apps you've actually downloaded for personal use may uh, introduce a malware on your phone, which then, you know, gets onto your company network through your phone. So what, what organizations can do and are doing is, you know, there are a lot of tools out there in market, MDM tools, mobile device management tools, which allow you to segregate personal data and work, uh, work data. So what, what happens is, you know, like once, you, once you do, the, sorry, once you do this segregation, whatever is uh, on your personal uh, workspace remains there and Nothing on the personal workspace can be copied onto the official workspace and you can enable whitelisting of only certain applications which can be uh, installed on the official workspace. So hence, you know, by segregating uh, this personal space and uh, official workspace, you can mitigate the risk of, you know, personal app uh, uh, related attacks going on hitting your corporate network. Thank you. So another gentleman. I I think you can take other question in offline. We can give a chance to others. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mahesh Krishnan and I'm working in uh, with the Kerala Poly Cyber Dome. First of all, uh, it's an interesting uh, panel discussion that is going on. So uh, from morning uh, till now, major concerns were regarding the other. So uh, my concern and question is related to the same. So, uh, it's not been a, you know, an year or so that we have seen that uh, our author or the UIDA is uh, getting compromised. That too for a 
active that too for a fun activity of uh, an iit karakpur or uh, you know some inborn or uh, what do you say insider threat so my question is what is the future of the unique identity that the india is on like we have you know applied or we have taken everything from the western when it comes to like our models or the uh, pers uh, perspectives so why can't we apply uh, you know social security kind of thing or uh, you know take that social security model what are the what is the trend or the future of uh, our unique systems yeah hi our future is bright first of all okay <laughs> uh, to answer to l let me uh, paraphrase your question so what you want i uh, uh, like in usa we have uh, is social security numbers why don't we have that okay so if you see um, first it has to come to a certain maturity level and which is coming right now so the, uh, uh, morning some colleague said that okay why aadhar card see that is a awareness has been already created once that come ob obviously it will become uh, that is one thing but when it comes to the username password just take it in writing next maximum 5 years after 5 to 10 years no username password it will be the totally different kind of authentication it will be there that's a future which we can see thank you so last and final question sir you can ask question after the session uh, sorry yeah uh, as a security is a ongoing process uh, security is a ongoing process and uh, we have built a good policy we have built, uh, we have done all the vapt test and uh, we launched the product then uh, after that uh, ongoing process means uh, what is your opinion uh, uh, for a response time and identification that we need a good eyes and ear to security like security operations center so uh, what we can include uh, Uh, our traditional security operation center to become a next generation security operation center so that is evolving now as socs is also become a part of managed service providers there are organizations so every organization can't afford an soc so there are organizations as managed security service providers mssp they are setting up they are setting up their socks and they are outsourcing their services to organization because as i said it's going to be a cat and a mouse race so today i develop a sock looking at today's vulnerability but every day the vulnerabilities are evolving i'll just give you an example of one organization without naming it uh, we did the vapt for that organization we kept it 100% clean and we said now you are safe and secure without our information one of their developers added a small module on the same web application that module was not properly coded and tested and it was not told to the security service provider after 3 days because of that small module it was a very small thing for them they just added what contact page or a new email id to their web server and because it was not properly coded the whole system got damaged and they were hacked and the blame the first blame which you will give is to the security company aapne kaisa audit kiya tha aapne kya kaha tha ye to sab theek tha so this is what i am saying so it's it's a constant process you and and the problem in our country has always been when it comes to security ki jab aag lag jaye tab fire fighting kharidte hain jab darwaza toot jaye tab security guard lagate hain jab chori ho jaye tab cctv lagate hain so we'll have to come out of that approach and we'll have to have a proactive approach and then you'll have the best socs and you'll be updated to all the threats and technologies thank you thank you so much thank you for uh, uh, may sorry. i uh, add what sir yeah with your kind permission yes yeah so uh, why why your question is <clears throat> uh, very much valid and very good question and one need to look at from that perspective now so from an application security perspective why while, while you have done your vapt everything has been done and pertaining to soc so what kind of uh, events that are going to get generated from that application or from that system is something one needs to look at and that is what what you are going to monitor so there are different devices say you have a firewall you have a web application firewall you have your uh, system your application while all this individually generate alerts to you you need to relate correlate all these events and then you understand it say suppose for a simple example your dba database administrator is is working from morning 9 to 6 say after 6 o'clock is not working and all of a sudden you see there is a connection vpn connection 
that is coming up at say nine o'clock or tomorrow at late night or maybe 12, 12 o'clock. That is something an abnormal behavior which you observe. So those kind of use cases that you one needs to develop. After having identified such things, the next level of security operation center is forming of various different teams, a blue team, a red team. While you identify say a ransomware or a, sorry, a malware or anything on that front. So how do you diagnose it? There would be, should be a separate team who analyzes such things also. So a, sub, a separate red team, a communication channel needs to be established to your seniors also, communicated to all well-versed senior members. That also needs to get established. So SOC in the coming future plays a very crucial and very important role that you can see on that front. Right? I hope I answered question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your patience for this wonderful discussion. Thank you so much for the gentleman as well. Uh, uh, with this, we are closing this panel. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable time, gentlemen. I'd like you to kindly hold on. I'd like to request Mr. Arun Kumar Sani to kindly come forward and do the honors of presenting our mementos to our panelists. Mr. Rajendra Bhale Rao. Can we have a big round of applause, please? Uh, next, Mr. Snehal Kumar. Now take your seats. So we are moving on to our final session of the event for today. And I'd like to introduce you to a very special and esteemed guest whom we have amongst us today as our guest speaker, 